Hebron is in an area called the West Bank, which in 1948 had not been under the control of Israel. It had been in a negotiated deal at the end of the war. It had been under the control of Jordan. In 1967, in the Six Day War, it was conquered by Israel. And there were international doctrines that called for it to be given back at the end of the war, but it wasn't followed through on. And instead, against international law, Israel began to move its people into creating what were called settlements. Over time, more Jewish Israeli settlements were created right in the areas where the Palestinians were living pushing the Palestinians outside of their houses to move in. Oftentimes this was done illegally. Internationally it is always illegally, but even according to Israel's law, but then it would be legalized after the fact. I had never seen the occupation firsthand quite as vividly as I did when I went to uh, the West Bank with Interface, Interfaith Peace Builders in 2010. This was the first time that I really interacted with Palestinians who wanted to end the occupation and uh, were fighting for their freedoms and their basic human rights in a variety of tactics. So the only tactics that I was exposed to as an Israeli through the media was that it was all violent. And I met with nonviolent resistors to the occupation in Hebron. Isa Amro showed us around and it was the first time where I really saw the wall from the other side. Hebron is home to the most violent and ideologically extreme of the settler movement. Settlers in general, their goal is to take land and to push Palestinians off it. Palestinians, especially in Hebron, are treated as less than human. Hebron has 20 checkpoints, and recently these have been remodeled. The front of the checkpoints looks like um, the front of a maximum security prison. The primary objective is to remove political control over that territory from Palestinian people who live there. One of the things that is necessary in order to do that successfully, given that the Palestinians are not all that interested in leaving their land, is a military presence to make it extremely difficult for people to successfully stop that land acquisition project from moving forward. So part of the function of the occupation is to restrict the movement of Palestinians, to intimidate Palestinians, and to enforce the ongoing reduction of their political control over that territory. What I observed was a very successful project in actually removing political control over the territory, and a very unsuccessful project in breaking the will of the people. The Israeli military has closed down Shuhada Street, which is the main street in Hebron. It used to have many, many Palestinian-owned shops, and they've shuttered them and locked uh, the doors to these shops. And they've now the street is only allowed to be walked down by Israeli settlers. Shuhada Street was originally closed because of a killing of 29 Muslims uh, by a Jewish settler in Hebron, and the results of that uh, closed this street, uh, which was the sort of commercial street uh, for the Palestinian people in Hebron. What we saw was that the streets were actually uh, festooned with nets above the walkways to catch the rain of garbage and trash that is thrown down on the Palestinian side of that wall to keep the trash and the debris from falling on people and falling into the street. The street was closed to um, essentially shut down the economy of the Palestinian people who live in Hebron. Isa Amro is a representative from Youth Against Settlements, and he meets with internationals and Israelis and anyone who's interested in seeing the occupation firsthand and taking them on walking tours. My understanding is that Isa is now facing something like 18 charges in military court. And what I had learned about military court is that it is the court that actually 
uh, prosecutes, arrests and prosecutes people who are Palestinian uh, as opposed to Israeli, Israeli, the Israeli court system where I think people's rights are respected a bit more. And that people under military detention are often kept for many days, perhaps weeks, without even knowing what they're being charged with and without being able to have legal defense during that time. If they have lawyers, sometimes their lawyers can't even find out what is in their folder and what it is they're actually charged with in order to begin to build a defense. Esau also talked about threats that he faced directly from settlers who would threaten him based on the fact that they understood both his leadership and his commitment to equality in that city for Palestinians and Israelis. He actually did not describe himself as seeing Israelis as his enemy. He saw the occupation as hugely problematic in terms of promoting justice, human rights, and full access to the territory of the Palestinian people who had lived there for generations. My belief is that one of the main causes of Israel revising these charges um, and working harder to silence Isa Amro and put him away is the success that he's had working and continues to have working with Israeli Jews and American Jews and building alliances with them to join the Palestinian struggle of nonviolent resistance. Isa Amro's next court date will be July 4th. This will be the official beginning of his trial and nine of the 38 witnesses against him will testify on that date. Um, these witnesses are comprised of settlers and soldiers. This, from my perspective, it is the antithesis of what contemporary Reform Judaism is about, which is the fact that every individual has the same rights and um, the same value, both under the eyes of God, however you may um, interpret the creation, and also uh, according to the law. Mm -hmm.